Hello, and welcome to Girl STEM Academy. In this multi-part series, we are going to learn how to code in Java. Check out our last videos on 2D arrays and recursion. In this video, we will cover a commonly asked intermediate level interview question regarding arrays. Be sure to watch our video on arrays and an array Google interview question if you haven't already. In our next video, we will build on today's problem in a difficult level question called trapping rainwater. The problem we are covering today is typically referred to as the maximum water container. We are given values for heights, then we are to find the maximum area achieved by choosing two of the heights as walls of the container. For example, here are some given heights. 2, 1, 6, 8, 7, which I represented in a graph. Say we make the bar of height 2 the left wall and the bar of height 7 the right wall. Then the area of this container is 2, which is the height, times 4, which is the width, which equals 8. So, the height of our container is always the minimum height of the two walls. In this case, the minimum of 2 and 7 is 2. The width of our container is their distance from each other on the x-axis, which in this case is 4. But is this a maximum possible area? We have to look at all of the other pairs, such as 2 and 1, 2 and 6, 1 and 8, and so on. After trying all test cases, we find that the left wall of 6 and the right wall of 7 would produce an area of 6 times 2 equals 12, which is the maximum possible area. To code this problem, first we will be exploring a brute force solution, then a more efficient and clever solution. As you watch this video, please click the subscribe button and click notifications on. It really makes a big difference for us to create good video content. Let's first see the code for the brute force way to approach this problem. I've written the code here to illustrate the solution. First, I initialized my integer array of heights with the values 2, 1, 6, 8, and 7, which is what our graph was of. Then, inside my method, I initialize an integer variable max area to equal 0. And now, to traverse all the elements and find our pair of left and right boundaries, we can use two for loops. One outer loop to go through each of the elements as the left wall, and one inner loop to go through each of the elements as the right wall. Notice how the left wall starts at index 0, and goes until the length minus 1. And the right for loop starts one more than the left for loop, and then goes all the way to the end. Now inside of my two for loops, first I find the height of our container. And as we know, this is the minimum of our left and right height. So that is found using math.min. Then I find the width of the container by subtracting my left index from my right index. Then to find the area, I multiply the height of my container times the width of my container. Now to see if that's the max area, I set my max area equal to the maximum of my previous max area and the area that I just found. And then finally, I return my max area. Now let's run our code. And as you can see, it prints out 12, which is indeed our maximum area. Now let's go through the more efficient solution. Most of what was inside our two for loops will stay the same. However, instead of writing two for loops, we can just write one while loop. We can start our left bound at the first element and our right bound at the last element and then move each of them closer and closer to each other towards the middle until they pass each other. By having just one loop, our solution would go from an O of n squared solution 
to an O of N solution, which is much more efficient. So first, I'm going to set a new variable left equal to zero, our index zero, and then a new variable right equal to the height length minus one. And this is because, remember, arrays start at index zero and go to the length minus one. And now, while the left is less than the right, so while they don't pass each other, we can set our integer height equal to the minimum of the heights at our left index and the height at our right index. Then, like we did before, the width will equal our right minus our left. And then again, our area will equal our height times our width. And then once more, our max area will equal the math.max of our maximum area, our previous maximum area, and our new area. And let me be sure to initialize my max area to zero. All right, but now, how are we going to be moving these left and right pointers? So we fix this by inside the while loop, we say, if the heights, height at our left index is less than or equal to the height at our right index, then move the left pointer one place to the right. If it is not, or in other words, the height at our right index is less than the height at our left index, so that would be if our left index is, say, 7, and then the bar on the right index is only 2, then move the right index to the left. This way, the left index will move to the right, and the right index will keep moving to the left until one of them passes the other. And now we will return our max area. So now let's run our code. And over here in my main method, I'm printing out the results from this method. And as you can see, it returns 12, just like our other solution, but now it is running more efficiently. So there you have it. This was a common interview example to show you an intermediate level of using arrays as well as how to approach problems more efficiently. In the next video, we will cover one of the most popular array problems, which builds on this question called trapping rainwater. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and learning about arrays in Java. If you want to see any other video from us on any topic or specific Java concept that interests you, please mention it in the comments below. Check out our other videos on magic molecules and crypto. Please click the subscribe button to support us so we can add more content every week. Thank you for watching.